welcome to Producer Profile. Producer Profile is a show where we showcase some of the talented people who work behind the scenes in the entertainment, business, and local communities while making positive influences on the lives of others. Because it's the birthplace. Welcome to Producer Profile. I'm Stella Winston. And I'm Orville Nelson, and uh, oh. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, because we have a, a guest. A fellow producer. Yes, we do. Yeah. And she's a, been a BCAT producer for a long time, mm -hmm. and her name is Phyllis Talaferro. Mm -hmm. That name sounds so familiar, Talaferro. Is that, isn't that T in Booker T. In Washington? Washington. That Booker T could be for Talaferro? Booker. Talaferro, Washington. Washington. Are you related? Welcome to the show, folks. <laughs> Phyllis. Are you related to uh, my great grandmother? Okay. Grandma Lucy, mm -hmm. my grandfather's mother, was cousin to Booker Talaferro, Washington. Oh. And you know the story of how he became Washington. He got grandiose when he started school. He always had the name Talaferro, but when the teacher asked him what it was his name, he said, Washington. <laughs> Booker Washington. Mm -hmm. So grandiosity runs through the family. Excellent. Okay. So to speak. <laughs> so, and thus we have Phyllis today yeah. in the tradition of Booker right. mm -hmm. T. Washington. Right. Okay. okay. So we're here to talk about your show. Right. And her show has changed terrifically in, in, in far as name is concerned. Well, yeah, it's changed in name, but I think that the, the idea, the um, the goal of the show really is to encourage people to do things. I used to tell people to go out and vote, but that was a very dangerous thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Especially my, after Florida? Yes. <coughs> well, I mean, this is even in New York. Even in New York, and I'm surprised that you're in Florida, by the way. Uh -huh. But even in New York, it's very dangerous to talk about voting because mm -hmm. we must maintain the status quo. And if I encourage people to go out and vote, the status quo will not be maintained. So ultimately, my show was the only show that was blocked out during the election uh, well, 30 days before the primary, going into the general election. I was the only politician that had no show. Uh, uh, Miller is on the school, president of the school board, and I think 16, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Dave Miller. He has a show, never stopped, and he ran for the city council. Lenore Falani has a show on BCAT. She was registered also running for whatever. Her show was not stopped, and every politician Why? in the city. Why? Oh, I don't know. You know, uh, you're from Jamaica, and Bob Marley says those who have sense enough to run away live to come another day. Uh -huh. So I came another day. All right, so did you run? Oh, I definitely ran for All the right. city council, yes, okay, but good. they want to make sure that I, uh, you know, got a little crook in my leg or something along the way. So is that why you changed the name of your show? That is absolutely why I changed the name of the show. It's very dangerous that I should run around Brooklyn. So it used to be called Brooklyn Must Vote, Brooklyn and now vote. it is called the, the Phyllis Talaferro Show. Okay. Yeah, but everybody <laughs> in Brooklyn knows now. Phyllis Talaferro Show. If they Talaferro see Phyllis Talaferro, they're going to be thinking about bro voting anyhow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, how long has it undergone the name change? Uh, I actually tried to, that, that was a problem too, because when I came back for this quarter, I did put in an application to change the name of the show, but they kept it, Brooklyn Must Vote. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now I've put in for it again to be changed. But when I came back for this quarter, I've been calling it the Phyllis Holofaro Show anyway, and so without incident, because officially I put in for the name right. of the show to be changed. Yeah. Now the substance of the show, what is different? Is it just a name change? No, it's still encouragement. I don't but talk. Now it's not I just don't about say. Voting. I don't give my monologue every week, mm -hmm. telling people that they should get out and vote and why that we're under the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And, you know, this is ridiculous that we what, should be What is the Voting Rights Act of 1965? The Voting Rights Act of 1965 addresses areas with low voter turnout, anticipating that there's a reason why people are not turning out to vote, anticipating that someone is stopping people from coming out to vote. Like in Florida. Right, okay. like in Florida. So ultimately, the Justice Department comes to New York every year when there's a school board election, um, presidential election, the Senate election any election, New York City, the uh, Justice Department comes here to monitor voting to make sure that voting is done appropriate. Did okay. they do that in Florida also? I'm curious. I don't know ah. because I so don't know if those... These things are I don't just know so if amazing. Those counties, <laughs> yeah. No, I, you see, I don't know if those counties had the low voter registration ah. and the low voter turnout. Mm -hmm. So this is where it happens, where there's very low voter turnout and very low voter registration. Okay. Has there ever been shenanigans here in New York? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it after this clip. We have a clip of right. our show, and then we'll talk about that later on. Okay. okay. So let's go to the uh, first clip of the Phyllis Talaferra show. Right. That was well, actually, these are clips from the Brooklyn Must Vote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, come so on. I don't know which show, which clip is going to come up. 
Today yeah. we're going to talk about it. I have my guest, Mr. Green. I want to know what voting's got to do with Crown Heights Youth Collective. Is there any political things that Mr. Green should know? Are there any political things he should be doing? Uh, what does voting have to do with all of our young people? No after-school programs. Too many guns on the street. Ann Tripp is on my left. We're going to talk. What's voting got to do with it? What does voting have to do with it? Well, it has, uh, you mentioned youth and you mentioned youth activities, and it's so ironic that uh, Anna and I were sitting here talking. We actually grew up together. Mm -hmm. uh, she's much younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell people. <laughs> she was a little one that crossed to the candy store. <laughs> but um, we grew up in a time, and we went, and you went to Erasmus. Uh, well, I went there during the strike, transit strike. Uh. Yeah, but, but I we had we had so much activities in our communities at mm. that time. We had every every activity. If I was a basketballer and was into the arts, correct. There was something for us to go and mm -hmm. express ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, if we needed academic help, we could go to after-school programs. All of these things have become almost uh, dinosaurs mm -hmm. in our in our city in our central uh, Brooklyn community. So that's without going any further in your question, what does voting have to do with it? These are the kinds of services that I feel has made us who we are today. That I came out of Flatbush and, and was able to... ...are being used. Some of that surplus money is being given mm -hmm. to those people who came out, who those people who in a block look like a very good voting block. And, you know, I applaud the people who came out to vote. I certainly do. But we still have to vote at nearly 100%, especially our communities. We are very important in the big cities. We all are. They, they, so it blatant. Okay. You've got mm -hmm. to get out and vote. We're with Al Farrow, and we were uh, talking about, about, uh, about the 2000 election. election. Mm -hmm. and, the presidential uh, election. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and how uh, you, the show encourages people to vote. Right. And given that, and looking at what happened in Florida, mm -hmm. and looking at what possibly is happening all over the country mm -hmm. to voters of color. Uh, what, what's a good word for what's happening to us? Well, I think that we're asleep, and that's why I had the show called Brooklyn Must Well, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to, 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 to be picky here, but mm -hmm. I, my gist is, if we're encouraging people to vote, and at the same time, people are getting out of their beds, people are leaving work early, people are doing all different types of things to actually get to the polls, are leaving their kids, blah, 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 and they get there and they can't vote. Somebody sh is moving around levers and changing their votes or not allowing to actually get their vote in the first place, stopping them at roadblocks, um, telling them that they are part of the prison system when they were not, making all types of quote-unquote mistakes. How does that impact what you're telling people to do? Well, I think that then we should become more diligent about how we appreciate the, the power that we have. Obviously we had a lot of power in our hands that we weren't using and this is what they wanted to stop. I mean is that true or not true? I'm we not could sure. have been very <laughs> powerful in the state of Florida uh, and that power we were not using. So a year before that election there was great voter registration drives with the NAACP and other organizations right. to get people registered and to get people to vote. And the state of Florida did not want to jeopardize the idea, uh, Jed Bush didn't want to jeopardize the idea of his brother not getting in the White House. They wanted to make it a Republican White House. And you know if the NAACP was uh, encouraging people to get out and vote, that they were going to have Democrats out voting. And so, I mean, they just illegally unlawfully, unjustifiably, went out and stopped those votes that the uh, movement had been on for over a year to get people registered. Now, so when you talk about power, is great what, what, power. What, what is, if, you, if, if you have power, they, they can't do that to your vote. Well, they didn't want us to realize our power. For years, well, we Well, I, I don't mean to get into wordplay here, but yeah. power means that uh, people respect you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if someone just tramples around the rights of your votes, what power is that? We have the power. There's no but doubt we that we lying. have power. We but were in terms sleeping on it. We were asleep as far as that was concerned. Are we checking polls? Or do we have anything in, within our, our means to actually make sure these things don't happen in the future? Will it happen in, in it the next election? It happens in New York all the time. All For right. instance, mm -hmm. uh, the name of the show is Brooklyn Must Vote. Mm -hmm. And the idea was, the idea is that we have a low voter turnout. We have low um, 
numbers of people registered. Mm -hmm. And the Justice Department actually comes to New York City, to Brooklyn, uh, the Bronx, and Manhattan. Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Staten Island. Queens and Stat uh, I'm sorry, Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Manhattan. Queens and Staten Island, they they uh, they vote. So the voting rights people do not the, the Justice Department do not go to those two counties. It's just the three counties where the voter turnout is low. And that's why I talk about it here in Brooklyn because we have power that is in a genie. And as long as it stays in that genie, we will not have good schools. We will continue to have all of our children incarcerated in Rikers Island, in a show that I did recently. I mean, it is disgusting. What are the go. reasons why the voters turn out is so low? What, what do you view as the reason? Because they're not encouraged and they don't understand the importance. I mean, I had uh, Sylvia Do you, Do you also think, I'm cutting you a little bit here, do, do you think that people are not just that thick, that people might actually believe and know within their hearts that things are actually happening with their votes? And I've actually felt that but somewhere inside for a long time. You know what? The idea about freedom is not that you sit there. You have to actively be involved in keeping your freedom. Can you be all involved in another way? Maybe that's what people need to to understand. Maybe people have, are saying, "I'm not saying this is the case," mm -hmm. but people are saying, "Why should I vote anyway?" I'm sure you've heard it. There, all kinds of things are happening. We don't mm -hmm. know what the heck is going on. But the, is but there you another have way? to be more involved in just. Is there another way for us vote. to actually uh, yeah. get our power? The, the, the money, money is very powerful in this country, Absolutely. how people are spending money. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can actually look there and encourage people to spend accordingly with oh, well, ourselves. Well, I just did a show on that, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact, and my guest was amazed that we could even discuss what he wanted to talk about right here in New York City in terms of Macy's. He didn't even develop the idea that I know why he wants to have a, a voice um, program, a voice effort to avoid Macy's. I know why. It's because federated stores po support the police department and the police benevolent association. And his idea. That's his is, only reason. No, well, he's feeling though the police department uh, and the police benevolent association are those people who stop you from walking down the street because you got sneakers on. Oh have yes. Have you ever been stopped? Oh, I have been stopped. Okay, well that's but the see, idea behind I, it. That's the idea behind it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there, there are much more, but this is one particular gist. Right. Of it. Yeah. This is this is I, I, Reverend Oliver. Reverend See, Herbert Oliver was a, a guest on my show recently. And where does he uh, have his ministry? He doesn't have a ministry okay. anymore. And right. since 1947, he's been being put in jail around the issues of voting. He had a church in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, there was a voter registration drive. Uh, it wasn't his church initially where the voter registration drive was supposed to be. It was at another church. But Bull kind of found out about that and squashed it. They moved it to another church. It was squashed. And he kind of said at the last minute, well, we can do the voter registration drive out of my church. His church was taken from him. He wasn't able to preach for six years in his own denomination, a Presbyterian minister. Um, so, I mean, but these are the things that, that go on every day, but not only in Birmingham here. I mean, right here in New York City, I tell people to call me on Election Day if you go to a poll and find out that suddenly the poll is all clo it's closed and there's no direction as to where to go to place your vote. Mm -hmm. Or if you find a local uh, county leader sitting up in the um, elect in the polling place, mm -hmm. directing things. In the area, yes. <laughs> yes. Where it's illegal to be, right? Yeah. So yeah. how illegal. often does that happen during frequently. election? Frequently. Mm -hmm. it, it happens frequently. That's why it was important to shut her up for a while. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And I accept it. Well, you know, uh, you have a great responsibility and it, it is, if you're going to look at women or black folk in history. Mm -hmm. If you look at Harriet Tubman, uh, she said that she could have freed many more thousands if they'd only known they were slaves. Yes. So you have a duty to do, and I always respect somebody doing their duty. And we always. have another clip mm -hmm. of her show, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go to that right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tuned into that. I think people, some people are, but I think um, most of the teenagers and young adults, and unfortunately um, our future is with them and it's unfortunate that so many of them, they're HIV positive and they're not even aware. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about abstinence. That sounds like an absent thought because I don't know if there's too much abstinence. I don't even know if people are encouraged 
uh, to even think of abstinence as a way of protecting them, themselves really from all sexually transmitted diseases. I think some people do because even with the um, teenage pregnancy rate, it's down and um, maybe that's one of the reasons why it's down because they're abstaining. Mm -hmm. And so you do think that some people are at least... A few, yes. Yeah, a few. Yeah. But obviously not enough. Not because enough. do you agree with me that the incident of AIDS is, is outrageous? It is. And um, there, there is so much information available and the health care um, is there for everyone who really needs it, even those who um, don't have insurance because they have ADAP. Um, this is a, a state-funded... Um, program. Yeah. Now I was telling you about a case that I uh, came in contact with doing psychotherapy. The gentleman was had AIDS. Uh, between the community to have people from the community come up and do programs. People who are organically linked to various struggles um, inside uh, the Gloria community. Gloria Gale. Right. And who, okay. Well th that was another um, incident. The, the last clip that we saw right. Bernard White from WBAI. Uh, oh, that was Bernard White? Yeah, that was okay. Bernard White. I did two shows with Bernard about mm -hmm. the problems that were at WBAI, where there was apparently a business coup to take over the I did, radio I did station. note the word apparently. Hmm? I did note the word apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and great, it was unsuccessful. About a month ago, the um, old producers who had been thrown out of the station were reinstated, and so we have we're back to programming that is not geared towards uh, big business controlling exactly what. Are you said. quite sure about that? Because I do remember the, the woman who made the changes was uh, Utrice Lee, right. who is someone I respect quite a bit and mm -hmm. has done a, quite a lot for the community. Mm -hmm. And you know, when people, uh, people powers that be, see a woman, especially a black woman, stand up mm -hmm. and do things and cut heads when cuts, you know, heads roll there mm -hmm. because they needed to be rolled. Mm -hmm. You see, we have different op opinions. Yeah. I still don't know what went on, but I do know a black woman was attacked because she did her job. And I think we have to be very, very careful with how we uh, move against black women. Sometimes they have a job to do and they do it. And this woman was crucified mercilessly. And she's a very intelligent woman. Very intelligent. Well, I'm a woman too. Yeah. And I think the issues are much bigger. Than I went somewhere and someone, someone big, stuck a mic under my face and said, you know, yeah. someone stuck a mic under my face and said, uh, what about what's going on at WBAI? What do you think of Utree Sleep? Mm -hmm. And my thing was, I am not sure what's going on. Yeah. And I really don't want to comment on something I'm not privy mm -hmm. to. Right. Sure. I think that's a good way to be instead of I saw a well, lot I of I saw a lot of black actions. people I saw yeah. a lot of people jumping on her without knowing anything. Uh -huh. We have to be very careful. I don't know that. if they were you see I I have been listening to WBAI for years. Mm -hmm. You've been listening yes, to for obviously years. for many years. Mm -hmm. um, and I told my granddaughter who's in Atlanta now in college that the guy who she remembers she doesn't know his name. She just remembers Bernard's theme song, see you in the morning, early in the morning. <laughs> That's uh, my singing debut. <laughs> uh, so I said, you know that guy, see you in the morning, mm -hmm. early in the morning. And she said, why? I said, well, you know, I just can't imagine what's going on at the radio station. Mm -hmm. But it, it smelled of a rat. And I think they used you, trees more so than I do again treats. must must say that yeah, you said think. I, think that she I must use. point out the word that you said at the beginning apparently yeah. and again you said think. Right. We do not know much about what's going no, on. No. You see and that's where we but have I'm to be not, very I'm, careful. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I but, but you do agree that we, we can, need to be careful. And we do we can mm -hmm. agree that we can disagree also. Yes, but I'm I'm wondering and I, I guess I'm wondering, do you feel it's, it's good practice to be careful if you don't know something pointedly? Because you use the word apparently, mm -hmm. and you use the word think. I'm a psychotherapist, so mm -hmm. we use those words. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tell me, the patient improves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he never um, gets well. When you start talking about psychotherapists, we go a different area again. <laughs> okay, but we're going to have a musical interlude yes, this I time. Yes, I think we need one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're going to have Della Ree singing with MacArthur's Park. MacArthur Park, I yeah. love that. Donna Summer did a cover yeah. of that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so oh. Donna Summers is not going to sing this one. No, Della Reese is going, going to sing. Let's yes. get that straight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, the, it's up.
There will be another song for me. And I will sing it. There will be another dream for me. Somebody is gonna bring it. Looking at the sun, oh no, oh, oh, oh. But after all the loves of my life, after all the loves of my life, you'll still be. Take my life into my hands, and I'm gonna use it. I will win the worship in their eyes, but life is kind of funny, and someday I'll lose. thinking of you and wondering oh, Yeah!